Uh, hello everyone. So welcome to the radiology recall of INICT May 2023. And congratulations to all of you who attempted this exam, even after giving NEAT PG. I'm sure if you get a good rank and you get into one of the AIMS, your life will change. AIMS uh, and all the AIMS that have built up now have really good infrastructure and also really good uh, academic programs. So in today's recall session, I'll try to quickly cover all the important radiology questions that were asked. And uh, the radiology questions were pretty easy, uh, standard uh, from previous questions that have been asked. So the first question that I'm going to discuss is the banana sign uh, on antenatal ultrasound. Now, this was a direct radiology question that was asked. And so the options were uh, spina bifida, omphalocele, uh, Down syndrome, and congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Uh, so I don't know whether the image was given or not, but this is the banana sign image uh, that is there. Okay, this is how the banana sign looks. And the answer to this question is a spina bifida, right? Now, why does spina bifida has a banana sign? So spina bifida uh, is a type of spinal dysraphism and is associated in a lot of scenarios with the carry malformation in which there is a shallow posterior fossa. Now, the shallow posterior fossa leads to descent of the cerebellum and the vermis into the spinal cord and that is what is actually known as a carry malformation and because of that descent the cerebellum wraps around the cerebellum this is the cerebellum it wraps around the brain stem now which is which part of the brain is the brain stem this is the brain stem the blue colored part so it wraps around the brain stem because of the shallow posterior fossa and gives an appearance of a banana. So this is the banana sign uh, that is seen in carry malformations or spina bifida. Now another important sign that is seen in uh, carry malformation is a lemon sign on ultrasound and these two are important uh, signs on antenatal ultrasound. So remember if there is a pregnant female who has come up for level 2 scan in those patients you will see these lemon sign and banana sign not on uh, not in an infant who has a carry malformation. Okay is seen on antenatal ultrasound and what does lemon sign mean so lemon sign is this pinching of the frontal calvaria so this is the skull this is the frontal bone and this posteriorly is the occipital bone right so lemon sign is this pinching of the frontal calvaria due to a shallow posterior fossa right so shallow posterior fossa descends down the cerebellum and in response to that, the frontal calvaria gets pinched. This is known as the lemon sign. Okay. Now, moving on to the second question. This was also an image-based question, a direct radiology question. Which variant of gallbladder is shown in the image? So, I think this was the type of uh, image that was given. I'm not really sure. But uh, the answer to this question is a Phrygian cap. So, it is a normal variant of a gallbladder. Right? It is not any pathology. Basically, the fundus of the gallbladder wraps around its body. So, it's like a Phrygian cap. Like this is a type of cap that is worn by clowns. So, a Phrygian cap gallbladder uh, is a normal variant. Uh, just a pointer that it does not, it is not a pre-malignant condition. It is just a variant. It does not predispose to GBCA. Now, other options were a duplicated gallbladder. So, in a duplicated GB, you will find two GBs. It is a rare condition, but I have seen one case during my MD. It is a rare condition. You will see two separate GBs, right? A GB polyp. Now, a lot of students can confuse the uh, indentation. Okay, this indentation with the GB polyp, right? But, uh, you know, GB polyp is a little rounded uh, structure and it has internal vascularity within. And if you're given this kind of image and you're asked a variant of gallbladder, so the answer would be a uh, Phrygian cap. A GB polyp is a pathology. It is not a variant. Uh, now, what is a Mercedes-Benz sign? So, first of all, Mercedes-Benz sign is not seen on uh, ultrasound. Mercedes-Benz sign is seen in gallbladder stones on X-ray. Okay, it is an X-ray sign of gallbladder because of the entrapped air within the gallbladder stone in the shape of the Mercedes-Benz logo. So that gives a Mercedes-Benz sign to the sign seen on uh, abdominal x-ray. Now coming on to the next question, uh, identify the MRCP findings. So first of all, a lot of students, uh, for the students who don't know, this is an MRCP image. MRCP image, the bile appears white and any filling defects within will appear as black. Okay. 
So just a brief anatomy recall. This is the this hole is the biliary system. This hole is the biliary system, right? And this right here, this thin white line, this is the pancreatic duct. And what is this structure? This white white structure. This is the stomach bubble. This is the stomach stomach fundus with the uh, contents within. Now in the biliary system, this part of the biliary system is the CBD. This is the CBD. This part above the cystic duct, this is the CHD. And what do we see here? We see in the CBD, there are these multiple black, 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 black things. These black, 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 black things. What do we call them? We call them signal voids. We call them signal voids. And in MRCP, they represent stones. They represent stones in the uh, in the within the CBD. So at MBBS level, remember the most common pathology that you will be given in an exam on an MRCP will be cholidocolithiasis only. Okay, at your level, you won't be asked other pathologies like structures or or uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis or cholidocal cyst or that sort of questions. The most common question at your level on an MRCP would be a cholidocolithiasis. So the answer here is a cholidocolithiasis because we see multiple signal voids within a dilated CBD. And this is an MRCP image. Now in acute cholecystitis, remember the investigation of choice for that is an ultrasound and not an MRCP. And you will see a, a, a gallbladder with thickened walls, pericholecystic fluid, and a stone within its lumen. So these are the three pointers which suggest acute cholecystitis ultrasound features. Now pancreatic duct stones, how will they look? They will first be present in the pancreatic duct. So they will be present in this area in the pancreatic duct. And if there are stones in the pancreatic duct, the pancreatic duct will be dilated. So what will typically be appearance of pancreatic duct stones? There will be a dilated pancreatic duct with these black, 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 black signal voids within. Now, this is seen in cases of chronic pancreatitis in which the pancreatic duct stones causes obstruction and dilatation of the pancreatic duct. Now, cholangitis, cholangitis is a clinical diagnosis. It's a clinical diagnosis in which there is a biliary obstruction and secondarily, there is an infection uh, which causes infection of the biliary system. That is what is cholangitis. And for that also we do an ultrasound. We do an ultrasound or a CT or an MRCP to see the cause of obstruction. So cholangitis is mainly a clinical diagnosis. This MRCP in this case shows cholidocolithiasis. Okay. Now, we move on to the next question. Uh, multiple fractures and painful bony lytic lesions. And this was the X-ray pelvis that was given. So what do we see here? First, we see that it is a child. It is a skeletally immature child. And we see this ground glass lesions, these ground glass lesions involving the proximal femur, This, these whole lesions. Okay. So these are typical. What is this? This is a shepherd crook deformity. Shepherd crook deformity. I have already told you about this in our class on musculoskeletal tumors as well as we also discussed this during the INI uh, fast track sessions. And if you have multiple of multiple such lesions, so we are dealing with the polyostotic fibrous dysplasia, right? Fib uh, polyostotic fibrous dysplasia we are dealing with. And if there are associated skin lesions, now, though some of the students are saying that it had specifically said light brown colored uh, chest macules. Okay, so they in that case represents cafe or lay spots, right? Cafe or lay spots. And if you have this picture of polyostotic fibrous dysplasia plus cafe or lay spots and also precocious puberty, precocious puberty, then you are dealing with what? You are dealing with, yes, McCune Albright syndrome. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, there was another question in which a direct chest X-ray of the patient was given. It was a trauma setting. Uh, and the question had asked just ki, what are the, which are the ribs that are fractured. So it was a typical radiological uh, question asking you, uh, asking you basically, how do you count ribs? Right? So you always count ribs, remember, anterior to posterior. So this is the first rib. Okay. So this is the first rib. 
this is the second rib and you see that these two ribs show very well cortical continuity so what do you have to see when you are counting ribs and seeing rib fractures you are seeing cortical continuity okay so this will be the rib one you are seeing the normal cortical continuity the second rib the third rib this is the fourth rib again you see very well cortical continuity but in this fifth rib okay this is the fifth rib you see that the cortex is broken here at this point you see that there is cortical breach so what is the buzzword for rib fractures it is cortical breach now remember this word for all kinds of fractures whether it's calcaneum long bone fractures fractures subtle fractures show cortical breach okay now in the so we have a fracture of fifth rib can we trace the sixth rib this is the sixth rib right we trace it anterior to posterior here we see a fracture so this is a fracture of sixth rib so can we trace the seventh rib we see that there is this cortical discontinuity or cortical breach at this level so there is fracture of seventh rib as well so basically there are fractures of fifth sixth and seventh rib in this question right now we move on to the next question so patient presents with dysuria uh, fatigue and backache x rib abdomen is shown below what could be the like diagnosis so uh, backache is uh, so this is a typical pre clinical presentation uh, of let's say a uh, uh, hyperparathyroidism so what is clinic uh, what is typically called as a uh, go on uh, moan and uh, low mood so basically low mood uh, uh, backache or bony lesions bone pain and uh, ut recurrent utis these are uh, features of uh, hypercalcemia in general and what is this x-ray showing it is showing medullary nephrocalcinosis medullary nephrocalcinosis right so there is increase serum calcium and in these options what can be the cause of that yes the answer here is a parathyroid adenoma which causes backache due to backache in that case is due to brown tumors right fatigue is due to hypercalcemia and dysuria is due to recurrent uti secondary to secondary to renal stones okay so medullary nephrocalcinosis is an important uh important spotter in exams both for ug as well as pg i would say and the answer here is a parathyroid adenoma okay now uh, another radiology question typical radiology questions of breast imaging what are the advanced all of the all of our uh, advantages of ultrasound over mammography except so let's just read the question uh, options first uh, uh non-palpable lesions can be diagnosed on ultrasound and not on mammography second helpful uh, ultrasound is helpful in image guided biopsy and mammography is not so both ultrasound and mammography are helpful uh, in image guided biopsy so it's not a typical advantage of one over another useful in young females with dense breast yes it is a correct option can differentiate solid and cystic lesion yes it is a correct option now uh, what are the advantages of ultrasound over mammography all of true all of these are advantages except so is ultrasound advantages over mammography in image guided biopsy yes although mammography and ultrasound both are used in image guidance but ultrasound is much more commonly used and ultrasound is much more easily used for image guidance because you can directly visualize the mass and change the needle position so this option is also correct okay now let's just read the first option again a non palpable lesion can be diagnosed on ultrasound and not on mammography no this is a uh, this is not an advantage of ultrasound over mammography so if there is a non palpable lesion you cannot palpate it so either whether you go for an ultrasound or whether you go for a mammography is dependent on the age of the patient so for even non palpable lesions if the age is more than 40 years you will go for a mammography and if it is less than 40 years you will still go for an ultrasound okay so it is not typically an advantage of one modality over other okay 
now let's go on to the next question which of the following is a sign of malignant transformation of tumor shown in the x-ray so what is the tumor that is shown so i think all of you know the answer to this this is an osteochondroma this is an osteochondroma also known as exostosis okay also known as exostosis so it's typically saying what are the signs of malignant transformation so uh, increase in cartilage in the scap thickness more than two centimeter yes it is a correct option so some say 1.5 some say two but this is a correct option normally it grows away from the joint but if it grows towards the joint it is a sign of malignant transformation not really okay bone marrow continuity in the tumor and the parent bone so this is a characteristic feature of osteochondroma you have to see it to call it osteochondroma it is not a sign of malignant transformation developmental abnormality that ceases to grow beyond skeletal maturity yes osteochondromas uh, do not grow beyond skeletal maturity and uh, so topage of growth beyond skeletal maturity is not a sign of malignant transformation so the answer here is uh, one right now uh, i have one more question for you so there was a question on thymoma there was a question on thymoma as well and i think it will be covered in surgery uh, as well and the options had mentioned that which of the following uh, are true for thymoma and so one of the options were it is the most common posterior mediastinal mass so remember thymoma is an anterior mediastinal mass it is an anterior mediastinal mass and in fact anterior mediastinal masses have very less differentials you can remember it by the mnemonic 40s okay thymoma teratoma thyroid so basically uh, mediastinal thyroid and terrible lymphoma terrible lymphoma so these are the four differentials of an anterior mediastinal mass and thymoma is not a posterior mediastinal mass remember now thymoma is the most common uh, primary neoplasm of the thymus be it uh, among both malignant and benign it is the most common primary neoplasm of the thymus so this was the correct option and another option was that investigation of choice for uh, thymoma is x-ray no it is a contrast enhanced ct the investigation of choice is a contrast enhanced ct and what are the clinical features since it is in an anterior mediastinum it is an anterior mediastinum it will not cause dysphagia it will not cause dysphagia i think one of the options had mentioned dysphagia so remember it will not cause dysphagia it causes svc syndrome okay because it compresses on the svc and the brachiocephalic vein so this was uh, all about the radiology recall uh, from this year's uh, may i ct thank you